the archer is a good all-round fighter, able to use swords, maces, even hand-to-hand. -hand. But their weapon of choice is, naturally, the bow and arrow, which they're able to use equally well for long range and close quarters combat. In my playthrough, I went for more of a run-and-gun style, preferring speed over stealth. The archer is also skilled, a skilled smith able to produce high-quality gear and wears light armor for protection without slowing them down too much. The archer is a native Nord and learned her craft through sustenance hunting. She despises anyone who hunts for sport, and only barely tolerates those who hunt as a business. She feels a deep love and protectiveness towards the natural world and discovered through her travels that there are many threats to her homeland, everything from bandits to the undead, so she puts her skills to use cleansing the land wherever possible. She's still undecided about the Civil War, whether to support the Empire or the Rebels. For now, there's plenty of other enemies to focus on. None of the vanilla armor sets felt quite right for the look that I was going for, so I found the rough level leather armor mod and really enjoyed it. I also used a smith nordic bow and a smith uh, nordic sword for backup. This time I didn't uh, end up picking up any magical items though. Okay, let's take a quick look at the perks that I've chosen for the archer. So obviously we'll start with archery since it's the main... Uh, the main skill, and you can see I chose almost everything in the tree. You'll see in a minute why I didn't choose a few of the ones that I didn't choose. So, mastery is just increased damage. Wing strike allows you to do more damage to those that you hit with your uh, by bashing them with your bow. Going up this side, we've got more damage the further away the target is. Um, reducing armor if the target isn't moving. If you st stand still for six seconds, you do more damage. That's sort of if you're, you, you know, you're acting like a like a distant sniper. Uh, three crows allows you, if you hit if you shoot a target quickly, you do more and more damage, and you can knock them knock them to the ground. And finally, perfect aim if again if you there's a short time between. Uh, strikes you do more damage. So more damage, more damage, more damage. Up this one, crippling shots, you have a chance of slowing the target down, and that stacks. Pinning shot uh, staggers them, and this one allows you to disarm. So you saw me disarm several people in the gameplay section. Clean kill just does more damage if they're at full health. Snipe, um, if it's been 10 seconds, you do a critical strike on them and any weapon enchantments. Of course, I didn't have weapon enchantments on my bows. Now, Deadeye, I didn't take because it's only a once a day power, so I didn't really bother. And it's, it's a little bit like, um, like the slow time uh, shout, sort of. Allows you to look for things. So it's, it's basically for, you know, taking out one powerful enemy or boss or whatever like that. I didn't really bother. 
up this side quick shot just uh, you can reload quicker and hailstorm uh, faster attacks with bows for 10 seconds after shooting a fully drawn bow and it stacks which is nice ranger moving at full speed that is very important for an archer character focus on the prey as you um, it means that you cannot be staggered while you have a drawn bow which is also very really nice lion's arrow another power uh, this uses allows you to cast a spell with your shots. So since I didn't use any spells, I didn't need to take that perk. Steady hand. I only got the first one. Uh, the next perks would have slowed time, which would have been nice, but I ran out of perk points, so I just went with steady hand. Enters dim discipline, allowing you to pick up extra arrows, that's not actually important, but I wanted trick arrows, which you saw me use extensively in the gameplay section, and they are a bit overpowered <laughs> after playing around with, you know, like the 25% extra uh, enchanted damage that you get with uh, the enchanted bolts from Dawnguard. So these are like crazy, and we'll, I'll take a look at those in, a little closer in just a second. And Hunt Together is cool if you're playing a hunter type of character, so you summon a spirit wolf. Uh, it drains stamina, which kind of sucks. Oh, sorry, no, it does damage according to uh, your current stamina, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, in fact, has a 30 second cooldown per target. So, I mean, that's cool if you're gonna, but the archer as a build is not really, it's not specifically a hunter, so I didn't take that. Might take that in another another playthrough. Now the archer does is also um, pretty handy with other weapons like blade, I believe it's blade, block, and hand-to-hand. -hand. So I just took a couple of perks in one-handed mastery so that whatever, I, I did have a smithed up um, Nordic sword at the end there, but if I got disarmed, if I like ran out of arrows and got disarmed of my sword I could just pick up any one-handed weapon and carry on pretty much doing uh, pretty decent damage. Light armor is obviously important for protection so we took mastery, uh, extra protection from uh, uh, <laughs> armor fit, what is that called? <laughs> yes, light armor fit. Uh, unhindered basically just wanted to move faster. Initiative increases your stamina regeneration and uh, when you enter combat Windrunner, faster again in combat. Uh, War Dancer, you strike more effectively. Fighter Flight, this is good because I'm, I wasn't doing any blocking, so if I get hit with an unblocked attack or spell, I re regenerate stamina f quicker. And same thing here, I get faster movement speed if I get hit with an unarmed attack or spell. And finally, more movement speed if you're if during an enemy's power attack now I, this is basically allows you gives you a chance to sidestep their power attack which is pretty cool but i never really focused on trying to get it done i also you'll notice i did not go up the i i once again just ran out of perk points like the uh, ordinator just has so many perks so i ran out of out of skill levels that i could gain so i could pick more perk points so i didn't go up the unarmored tree even though the archer does, spe does well not specialize, but they they do do. They they are able to fight hand to hand if necessary. And I believe the only other thing is smithing. Yes. Okay. So smithing basically I just used to primarily to level up my um, the damage that my my uh, bow did. Um. I'm pretty sure that my armor is not covered. It's covered under just like this, just like the basic perk. I don't think any of these other perks affected my armor, but it definitely did did affect my bow and arrow, bows and uh, swords. So I made uh, a Nordic bow and a Nordic sword and uh, enchanted them to legendary, but then I also took the advanced workshop and applied that to a grindstone so I was able to get a little bit extra damage that way and I also put the smithing specialization on archery 
but it increased another 20 percent so we'll just take a quick look at those here's the rough leather armor mod that i'm uh, rocking pretty cool um on flawless it's a, it gives me a total of 246 armor and it it looks really good i like it for the for the archer character and there's the bow with 77 damage and the sword with 66 and then just a quick look at the special arrows so you need um actually i can just show you that where is that it is the trick shot or trick arrow perk there you go so you're able to upgrade many types of arrows at a forge or anvil, adding a bonus effect based on its material. So you first have to make the arrows, make a hundred of the arrows, or you need like a hundred, a hundred, <laughs> one hundred ancient Nord arrows, and then you can apply uh, like frost salts to get the freezing ones. You only get 25 per hundred arrows that you put in, so it's quite expensive. Uh, that... I guess that that kind of uh, is it's good because they are really powerful like this one 50 points of frost damage and halves movement and attack speed you saw me using that on the melee characters and they just slowed down so much uh, immolation 50 points of fire damage plus 10 points per second for 30 seconds um, ebony arrow of death uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what this means. 100 points of magic damage in an area, but it disintegrates targets with 350 health or less. So I guess if they have over 350, it does 100 points. If they're under 350, they die instantly and disintegrate into a pile of ash. R Elven b arrow of grounding, really nice for fighting mages. They can't, it drains, uh, does shock damage, which I assume also drains their magic, but also silences them. Can't cast spells for 10 seconds. Very, very nice. This is kind of funny. <laughs> you can actually, if you attack somebody too close to you with the arrow of maze, it renders you, as well as the target, motionless and unaware for 15 seconds. <laughs> it doesn't actually say in there that it's an area of effect, but it is an area of effect and you can be affected by it. And finally, the Orcish Arrow of Force blasts people all everywhere. 10 foot, 10 foot radius. Oh yeah, so, you, so if they're gathered together. Unfortunately in the gameplay section, quite a few of them were archers, so they were kind of spread out, but if you had like several melee characters together, you could just blast them all up into the air. That's pretty funny. Kind of a little bit like using, um, you know, unrelenting force or whatever. All right, that is it. Did you hear something?